What's up fam, Extraordinary Life with Elijah. And this week, mm, I'm not sure who is my extra and what I'm made as the ordinary. <laughs> it's kind of complex, but I think the world in general is my extra and I am the ordinary. I don't know about you, but as time goes on, I don't know if you're noticing, but 2020 shifting to 2021 has, hasn't done a whole lot to just magically solve all of the craziness, the chaos and crisis in the world. Chronology does not calm crisis, Christ does. <laughs> but this week as I was going through just in study and reading favorite passages out of Matthew chapter 5, 43 through 48. New insights and a favorite passage popped out for me. Starting in verse 43, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Get this portion. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The passage in there that really popped out and punched me in the nose was if you only love those who love you, what reward will you get? It's very prevalent throughout all of society right now that people who love those who love them are, are becoming more and more polarized. That camps are getting more and more fortified, that more and more language of a hostility of us against them and whatever it is that separates and defines your specific bandwidth of focus and passion. They're, they're getting, the lines are getting sharper and sharper, more and more divided. Out of that, Jesus' question was, if you only love those who love you, what reward will you get? The principle then that jumped out to me this week out of considering that is that relationships and community that's built in a, a narcissistic self-love, an echo chamber of us, we are us, <laughs> that those relationships are very unrewarding. That loving those who love you and are like you out of the things that you agree upon, and that's the basis of your relationship and your gathering, that that leads to unrewarding relationship. Hmm. Interesting. Together with that, a passage out of Hebrews says that it, without faith it's impossible to please God. That those who come to him must first believe that he exists, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So out of that, a principle that speaks to me is that the process of faith exercised in the pursuit of God is that number one, you believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him by faith. The challenging portion of that then to me is, is that if I only orient my life in relationship to others who are like me. I love them, they love me. So it's really just me loving me. It's self-love out of a narcissistic reflection of mere humanity. <laughs> mirror humanity and mere humanity. It's the mere mind of flesh. But if my relationships are only based out of that mindset, the end result is that I will have very unrewarding relationships and I will find myself in a context where it's impossible to please God. I often pursue relationships with people who are like me, that they love the things that I love and there's just this fluid back and forth thing of an echo chamber of us-ness. <laughs> the reason that I pursue those is that they're very easy, they're very fleshly. There's no necessity of risk in exercising, pursuing others by faith. It's possible. It, there is no impossibility of faith included because I'm just loving me. The challenge then becomes pursuing people 
out of a mindset that is governed by Christ. Philippians says, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, that who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself and became nothing and took on the appearance of humanity, the creator, become like the creation to pursue, to seek and to save those who are lost, his very enemies. Hmm, mind blowing. So Jesus, who being in very nature God, who had every just and righteous and holy reason to keep his butt firmly planted on the throne of heaven, of his own volition stood up in honor of his father's will and plunged into a sea of complete depravity, repelling into the enemy camp of heaven as a fertilized zygote tethered to eternity by an umbilical cord. That is insane. If you have the ability, you have the justified, holy, and righteous right to sit in heaven and demand that all of your enemies come to you and that you stay within a context of those who love you and are like you, so that Jesus just stayed in heaven amongst the Father and the Spirit and the Son, together loving those who loved them and were like them. They greeted one another as brothers, as family, as father and son. He had every right to stay there, but yet of his own volition that he stood up, became like me, the orphan enemy of heaven, to pursue me in love. If that's the mindset of heaven, how can I do otherwise? If I truly desire to have rewarding relationships, it's going to be in the context where I represent the mindset of Christ, that his mind would be in me. And so that as I consider us, the camp of usness, and I consider them, they are the enemy, and they, they are ruining what we stand for, and we know what we stand for, and we should band together in order to overcome them so that we can rule so that everything looks like heaven on earth, which is not releasing our Father's will on earth as it is in heaven, it's just perpetuating my will. All of that then leads, Jesus said it, to very unrewarding relationships. So the more that I look at the world, that's why I'm like, I'm so encouraged by it because it helps to reveal the areas that I need to grow in in my life. As I look at the spin and the swirl in the world and all of the back and forth camps, that it helps to reveal things in my heart that are off, that need to be transformed. I want to have very rewarding relationships, but more than just having rewarding relationships, that I long to represent the heart of my Father well through the person of Jesus Christ by the power of his Spirit. What that necessitates then is me standing up from my rightful free place to sit, that no one can take this from me, it's my right, I get to be here, to stand up from that place, to make myself vulnerable, to enter a place of weakness, to enter a place of incarnation where areas that I do have the ability to speak into and to create and to transform, much in the same way as Jesus created all things from nothing, but to say, ah, oh, I have that author ability there, and I know that that is something that I have the ability to speak into and to create within, but I am going to humble myself and become like those that I am very unlike in order to pursue in love. That I'm gonna do that and explore it by faith through suffering, through sacrifice, through loss, through maybe even pain, injustice, false accusations, but to pursue my enemies, those that I perceive as being my enemies, which honestly could just be based on my own prejudice, prejudice and stupidity. Dare we even think that that's a possibility? That I could be wrong and self-deceived? Nay, say I, whatever. I know myself and how prone I am to suspicion and to broken thoughts. So if that's where I'm at, 
that I am prone to suspicion and false thoughts and misleading myself through the lack of my awareness of reality in others and in totality as it truly is. If that's me, and yet Jesus in perfection stood up from his place knowing that he had no sin in him, that there was no part of him that needed to be repented of, that he was in right standing with all of humanity, but that humanity was not in right standing with him, but stood up and sacrificed his life to pursue relationship with his enemies. How can I do anything less with my fellow man? I hope that is making sense. This is a thought. Revelation from this week, me and God, super fresh and raw, and I'm just throwing it out there. But my encouragement to you is that in this season of time, that you would come to understand that orienting yourself in relationships with people who are like you, that you surround yourself and love people that love you because you love yourself and the people that surround you are like you and that you form camps with them to help grasp and hold on to the things that you love together and feel are being ripped out of your fingers and it's making you desperate and so you grip it even harder that you would let the mind of Christ be in you. Who, being in very nature God himself, do not consider equality with God and staying with him something to be grasped. That that mind would be in you and that you could hear the admonition of Jesus to say, pray for those who persecute you and love your enemies that you may have rewarding relationships. That in order to please the heart of God and to do the impossible, that our relationships must be based in the exercise of faith, believing that God is, that he is who he said he is, and that he longs for us to join with him in representing his heart by pursuing those who we are not in right relationship with. And that out of that, that we would have very fruitful, very rewarding relationships and that we could be shown to be Jesus's disciples bearing much fruit to the glory of our Father. To encourage you guys, this is not my criticism, it's my confession that I've found a healthy dose of self-love and very unrewarding relationships present within my life. That there's improvement, <laughs> great improvement possible in my process of representing my Father well through the life of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you subscribe to what I'm doing, hit the button, hit it, and then get it. Hit the bell as well so you get notified with the new content. And if you loved this video, didn't just like it, hit that thumbs down button. I pray blessings on your day. I love you guys lots, and I'll see you in the next video.